Oh, hello, and welcome to another question and answer. Hopefully, this one is done to the best of my ability. And it's going to be a bit more, I think, socially or emotionally strenuous than the previous ones. Um, I'll try to keep it light and funny. I really can't make any promises because I get very easily frustrated with silly questions. And if you've just come off the YouTube live, then you know that my eyelashes are uneven, but we're going to ignore that to the best of our ability. So um, let's talk about emotional immaturity overkill of the use of boundaries, what is a boundary, why they do and don't matter, who they matter to, and most importantly, conflict resolution, like actually how to fight. Most people don't know how to fight and it drives me crazy. So before we get into that, I just want to address some, uh, I got a comment or two from the last live from Sunday. And Firstly, we discussed the eclipse and danger by water, and Katie left a comment saying, our kitchen got flooded today while I wasn't home. So uh, bear in mind, so late March through early to mid-April, there can be some kind of danger to water. And as I just discussed on the TikTok live as well, what happened in Baltimore, very unfortunate, is, um, hi, Shalala, hello, hello, is uh, interesting because astrologically, if you did... And if you know any kind of horror, hi, Nazreen, and she's here, hello. Um, you'll know that that was really, really on brand and on point, all the things Libra represents, Venus represents cars and boats, right? Um, just crazy, okay? So K2 was there. It was really, really, I don't know, it's just a lot going on astrologically. We could do like a breakdown, and I was, I normally would do that, but I did do one in 2022, I think in the start of the year, and I don't like the way that the year turned out. So I took it down and haven't done publicly since. But you know, what's really funny is I was thinking, you know, I should start doing stuff like that again, just kind of like to catalog all my own thoughts, because I did predict the month that Alexander Skarsgård would have a baby when I was looking at the Never Married in Astrology series. I was like, oh, he's gonna have a kid like right after his birthday on that year. And that's exactly what happened. And then I also said, like, in the Creativity and Astrology series, I was doing Barani, um, like Theo Vaughn and Lana Del Rey have strong Barani energy. And I said, she's going to win an award when she's like 38. And that's exactly what happened. She was like recognized as like the greatest American songwriter or something like that. And I was like, damn, I should like kind of like put that out. And then I was thinking about the Royal family and literally like two days before um, Kate released a statement or something, I was like, I'm going to go look at her chart and like see what's actually going on. And it's like pretty, pretty colorful and interesting. So I think now in the future, I will try to kind of, put them into video so that I just have a record of my own ramblings instead of just keeping them to myself. But most of them are on Patreon if you're on there, okay? So then we have wonderful Reem said, I really enjoy, I enjoyed listening to this on my walk. Love your hair. You look pretty as usual. Thank you. Um, and thank you so much to Reem because Reem donated. She tipped me on PayPal and she told me to get coffee. And I did the next day. I went out for a study break and bought myself lunch and coffee. So thank you so much, Queen. She wished me luck on my studies, which is very important. And then we come to compatibility. So Rocky asks, Rocky is learning astrology. He knows a lot. He said, thanks for sharing, Monica, about the sinistry chart. Let's imagine a woman has her man's uh, a woman has her mars lined up on my ascendant would you consider that healthy very good question so quick sinistry rundown any benefic contact to a major point in a chart is good right so venus on the ascendant moon to the ascendant that's fine all right um mars is a malefic and when you put one person's Mars on the other person's ascendant, so in this case, it's her Mars on his ascendant, he is likely to feel extremely jittery, okay? Very energized. So you could say something like he could be really passionate about her. He could be very uh, physically inclined towards her, things like that. But sometimes it can be exhausting. It can be um, restlessness, right? Too much, um, it's too stimulating, quick to anger. Mars rules bickering. So it actually depends. If you and she are both Mongol Doge, then it can uh, minimize some of the effects. But if it's not the case, then she it could be said that she could bring out the worst in you, for example. But it depends on a bunch of other things. Just as a general like, no, it's not something you would recommend. I mean, you could say in some cases, it's better than having nothing on the ascendant, but I don't know. It really depends. I, I would have to see it. Um, yeah, so just brace yourself that you don't 
find yourself quick tempered with this person. All right. So speaking of Mars and all that, we're going to jump right into how to resolve conflicts 101. Yes, it's 2024. People beef online all of the time. This is like the worst of humanity. We have, I can't, I can't even say it's generational. I'm very partial to the younger generation. They fill me with hope. I'm very inspired. But um, yeah, of course, they're used to doing things through a screen because that's how they grew up. And that's okay. They don't know anything else. What I understand is how someone can be in their 60s and be like this younger generation. And they hop on like Facebook and they're the most hateful, incessantly cruel, um, toned, mean-spirited people writing unhinged things all the time. It doesn't work like that, okay? If you want to benefit from the modern age and you partake, you have an obligation to restrain yourself from writing and producing hateful things, okay? So that's the first thing. Secondly, this is not a means to proper mediation, okay? If you have something to mediate, you have something, I feel like the mediator in this case is the device where you take the element out of being face-to-face and you say, I'm going to do it through a screen. It can kind of make it easier, but it can also dehumanize you and them. So you're not as bold maybe as you would be otherwise. Okay. So like someone asked me, turn me into a beef master, Monica, (laughs) I'm on my way. (laughs) But you know, they're saying that there's a Reddit group, nightmare level incel activities, nightmare. Megan sent me this. She went, oh my God, there's like a Reddit group of these incels congregating in New York, planning on like punching women I was like, that's not why God made the internet. And of course, it's easy for them to do because it's done through the internet and they feel inspired to do it. I'm not blaming the internet. The tool is useless if you don't use it. If this is how you choose to use it, that's on you, right? But you should be warned. Some women hit back. Okay, just as long as they be careful. But another thing I find really weird about that New York thing, maybe we should look at the chart for that, um, is how it's all these influencers who have like a million followers or like 700,000 or something. It's like, how come it isn't just like regular, degular? If this is some whack marketing campaign, I'll be furious, but I really doubt it. I think that's crazy and charges need to be pressed yesterday, okay? We need to, and I love the comments of those videos because people are like, the NYPD does nothing. Like, they literally do nothing. Like, they can't prevent anything. And I'm just like, yeah, it's kind of crazy how we live in this world that's so openly, hey, Mimla doesn't really actively care for the ladies, which is disappointing. Right, Mila? She would never, she's a lady. She would never tolerate that. Anyway. What is going on? Okay, so the internet for these kinds of things is absolutely crazy and it's absolutely dangerous. And we know this, we know this, all right? Another thing is um, how to resolve problems. A lot of people don't know how to fight. My dream is to write a book called How to Fight. Like I've had this idea since I was 17. If I see this title come out, I'm going to be inflamed, okay? But it's just not that hard. I don't understand what the problem is disagreements are a natural part of life. We disagree with people all the time. The idea that a single disagreement or disagreement and opinion makes you throw out that whole person and dispense with them is what I like to think of as my analogy of like H&M clothing. It's like you wash it five times and it just like disintegrates. It just like falls apart. Like you're not meant to talk to people for a month and then throw them out when you don't agree on something. I'm not saying that you should be a pushover, but this sort of over control is so incredibly rigid and insane to me. I don't understand. We have a question. What's your best advice would be to stay in the present, trust the process and know that your manifestations and your dreams, it's going to come true because it's meant for you. It's your faith. Oh, your faith is your fortune. What is that saying? Something, something faith. So be it on to you. What was it? And there's another one, the O ye of little faith. Why are you afraid? So staying in the present, really not to just, uh, I wouldn't be longing for anything. I wouldn't, I would get out of the state of wanting and just be calm. You have to be relaxed to receive what you like, which I know because I'm never really relaxed. Okay. Disagreement is a good thing. You learn for all and everyone. So correct me to uplift my views. Okay. That's the truth. Okay. So disagreement is just a fact of life change. You know, people change opinions, people grow, that's fine. But here's another good point, okay? We've talked about this before, but I'll mention it again. If you actually care about somebody and your relation to them, you go out of your way to point out things that are rather unpleasant. Like if you are in a marriage, you don't want to throw away seven years or 12 or 20 years of your bond 
but you don't like the way your spouse, whatever, loads the dishwasher or does something in your intimate life, because you care about that relationship, you're willing to go out on a limb and remedy this one thing. Like you wouldn't throw away your friend because they have a different communication style. Probably not, I'm guessing, right? So don't do that romantically and don't jump to these conclusions. Like if you actually care and you want that relationship to last or that job, that workplace, whatever, you can just say, hey, you know what? It's cool. No hard feelings. I thought this, you meant that. That's just be like a peaceful person. And to be a peaceful person is not to be a pushover or none of that. We don't need to jump to extremes. I'm going to stop prefacing things and assume that people who come to like our lives and our channels are of a high IQ. Okay. So now they, but now yes, it's one time. It's like, I don't care about your one time. I'm telling you, like in general, you've got to get over it. Like somebody just has to be the one to get over it. You don't have to be the one to do it every time because I'm a very flexible person and I've noticed I'm just tired. I'm tired of having to do that. So I don't do it anymore. Okay. But if other people haven't caught up to you, then maybe you have deeper things to consider and discuss in terms of your standing to that relationship, that friendship, that workplace interaction and so forth. Okay. But basically resolve your problems. Stop just like throwing people out like they're used things. It's very, very strange to me. I don't know why this is so normalized. Like, oh, I haven't heard from that person in two days. I'm just going to block them and they're dead to me. Why? I don't, I don't get it. What the, what is the best advice you would give to your younger self? Don't worry. I worry a lot. Worry felt to me as though it was productive and it held me accountable, like to do better, but worry doesn't actually produce anything. And like they say, worrying is praying for what you don't want. So, um, yeah, there's no need to ever worry. Like it's the dumbest thing. So if I just start thinking, What I would do is two things. One, assume the worst case scenario and then try to mentally climb your way out of it so you're not panicking. And the second thing is if whatever's going to happen is destined to happen, by worrying, you just make it happen faster. There's really no point to ever be worried. That kind of overcompensation probably comes from a place of fear of overtaking the individual. True. Okay, so sit down, have some honest discourse with people and close the gap. Okay. That's the first thing. Okay. We can talk about this for like a week straight and we still won't be done, but I'll mention that first and foremost, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, actually evaluate what it is and how severe it is. Okay. Um, and then that, that, that also goes for people who are hyper defensive. Why are you like that? Okay. It's not healthy. No one in the world is going to agree with you on every little thing. Trust me. Okay. Just get over it. It's, it's weird and and infantile. I don't understand. Um, adults are expected to be more rational than children. And I feel that we have this over, um, acceptance of rampant emotions in 2024. It's not good for you. It's not good for the world. And you'll just be happier if you understand that no one can make you feel a certain way. You're responsible for how you feel. I'll take it farther. I was, I've always told myself, I tell my thoughts what to think. I tell my feelings what to feel. And then I heard Reverend Dyke say it many years later. And I thought, I knew I was right. I knew I was right. So stop it. Okay. No one carries the burden of your happiness, but you, and that's actually a blessing. That's the first thing. Secondly, as I said, boundaries overkill. When the word boundaries came out, I thought, great. Finally, like people understand. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong. Because they just took it and they ran with it. Everything is a boundary. It's not. Okay? It's not. And if you want to be in close emotional proximity and bond to other people, what makes you think your boundaries are the only important thing? Other people have boundaries too. And they're entitled to say no. They're entitled to have limits. And I don't know if we talked about this in the last live, but it's the truth. People who are effectively people pleasers, perhaps you can train them into responding to you in a way that pleases you. You can train them to say the right thing and do the right thing. But you know, deep down when you search your heart, that's not the love that you want. You want a love that's freely given. And a person who says yes to absolutely everything you want is an enabler. That's not love. Because if a person cannot say no to you, 
That means they cannot say yes to themselves. So you're siphoning off approving behavior from someone who doesn't actually know what love is. And they're only doing those things to avoid conflict, to avoid being left or feeling betrayed. And how long do you like those people for? Four and a half minutes, maybe five? Because it's boring. You're with a husk of a person with no individuality, right? They're just like a vessel for you to fill with your approval. And that's not love. It's not organic. It doesn't come from a confident, secure place. Okay. hundred percent, hundred percent. So you want to be with someone who can say, uh, I respect you, but this is not okay with me or something like that. Right now. I don't mean something unhinged, which something that I've noticed, I don't know what it is, but something that I've noticed with women in particular I think they think a mark of immaturity or a mark of maturity is having a reflector in a relationship in a very uncouth way. This is not the case. All relationships are naturally mirrors. Organically, they reflect to you. You don't have to seek someone out who openly criticizes you. That's weird. But I do hear, I don't know what it is. It's like, it's a woman only thing. I'm not sure what it is, but they'll say, my boyfriend's great. He doesn't let me get away with anything. He actually points things out to me. And I'm like, oh my God, he called me on it. He challenges me. What does that mean? That's really inverted because the role of the feminine is to challenge the masculine, not the other way around. So if you have some kind of emotional and social growing to do in terms of your relationship literacy, you should probably do that before you get into a relationship because that man, one of these days, it could be your behavior, it could be your reaction or defensiveness to things. Instead of making you feel safe, he's pointing out how he didn't like this and he didn't like that. And the next thing, it's going to be your body. It's going to be your money. He's going to start policing you. Slow it down. Slow it down, Okay. Is that possible if you've never been in relationship, but you going to be in the future and the only thing is stopping you because you're worrying about that you're not going to be good enough and more? Yes. So we talked about this on the last live. So like basically in astrology and, and spirituality, you are born with the perfect partner already like archetypally the energy it's already there for you. But what happens is you can't see it because you put so much bias. So it's all coming from you. So when you remove the fear, you attract those people, right? So don't worry about it. It doesn't do anything really. Okay. So the boundaries thing is very annoying, right? Like this one, my boundaries, but everyone has boundaries, obviously, but the staunch expectation that everything revolves around those boundaries is the sickness. That's actually strange. Okay. So this is why we come to the portion that's called emotional immaturity emotionally mature people, happy people, people who are great to be in a relationship with, okay, they are very flexible. They're highly adaptable. So will my Mercury ruled people, like please, Mercury at Makarika, Mercury on the ascendant, you know, Mercury ascendant or something like that, okay? Or just generally very laid back as we would call them, right? I'm not laid back, but I have some kind of insight <laughs> that doesn't make me super difficult to be around, okay? And what tends to happen is you'll understand, yeah, me, Nazreen. Okay, so this is actually, so, so Nazreen is a Virgo. There are some astrologers, one in particular, who does really cool like graphs and like coding and stuff. And they did, uh, this person did a study on happiness and relationships, most likely to be married, most likely to be happy. I think it, I'm not, don't quote me. I think it was maybe 10,000 people or 5,000 couples, something like that. But the data that was extracted was so interesting. So people that are happiest in relationships, like in marriages by sign are married to Virgos because Nazreen's a Virgo. So I thought of that, but the unhappiest people were Virgos. So it's like, clearly you're getting a benefit from being with a very flexible, considerate person, but you're not giving it back. Right. And I think a very high divorce rate is uh, Aries. Aries are very headstrong. Right. So I thought that was very funny. So anyway, it doesn't matter what your sign is. Like we're just having fun, but truthfully, right. An emotionally rigid individual is a strange thing over the age of 18, but especially 25. At some point in my late 20s, I just decided if you're over the age of 25, I will not make concessions for you. I will not 
be adaptable. Okay. You're old enough to realize what you're doing is weird and you should do better. And actually one day, I hope that you thank me for holding you to that standard to act and be an adult. Okay. That's the first thing. So once you're over 25, I'm not coddling you, not figure it out. Okay. And plus, first and foremost, I'm an occultist. I assume some of us here are occultists. The point of occultism is to learn it yourself. I cannot spoon feed you information that you're supposed to experience. I can't, I can't, I can't, I have a Patreon. I, I really open up on there. Most people don't consume that information or know about it. So you know what I mean? I, I can't do it for you. I can't breathe for you. I can't manifest for you. It's not possible, right? You have to do it yourself. And the same thing goes for relationships. Honey, thank you so much for answering my questions. I've been watching you YouTube videos and they're great. So I'm wishing you all the best. God bless you. And may your dreams come true. Amen. And you and you and 10 times more. Amen. Um, I'm adaptable to a point. People often try to take advantage of my understanding nature and I'm learning whole as it can as well. Exactly. Like it can't, you know what I mean? Again, you're, that's, that's the perfect mix. You're not enabling someone. Okay. But this is the thing, this boundaries and the emotional stuff. Children operate from a very emotional place. That's normal because they're children. They're not rational beings. They have a different type of intelligence. You know what I mean? Baba Yaga vibes, figure it out figure it out. You'll be fine. That's the whole point of life, right? It's the joy, joy of life is to figure it out yourself. And so when an adult is saying, my feelings are hurt, you don't understand my feelings, you don't relate to my feelings, and everything is about my feelings, and everything in the world that is not validating to my experience is absolutely no good, I promise you the whole world can't be wrong. I promise you it's not the whole world, okay? It's just you. That is not normal, healthy adult behavior. So you, obviously we all have natural boundaries, right? Emotional safety, psychological security, physical safety, etc. But not everything about your agenda lines up with my agenda. I am an autonomous person with divine sovereignty. I'm allowed to like what I like and want what I want and care what I care about. I don't have to be hundred percent in alignment with you. If that is your criteria, Newsflash, you are incompatible with humanity. Humanity is not incompatible with you. You have to give people scope to do what they want, live how they want, etc. Okay, so basically when people are very emotionally stiff, tight, rigid, etc., they're just naturally difficult to be around. And that's not desirable. So if you are using your lack of emotional evolution and have this veneer of you being vulnerable so you have strong boundaries, that can work for a little while, but it's not going to last forever. Sooner or later, people get fed up, okay? And then you're going to come onto channels like mine and say things like, everyone always lets me down, I've been betrayed. Mm, okay, we've all been let down, we've all been betrayed. But really, there's like a quota. Like once you hit like 10 or 12 crappy interactions, you just start to understand that's that's avoidable and preventable. And for the most part, that type of suffering is needless and completely unnecessary. So don't take it so seriously and don't take it so personally. Abraham Hicks has this one line in their relationship meditation. They say, um, when others lash out at you, their battle is not with you, but with themselves. And that's the truth. How can you just go through life being angry with everything and everyone? At some point, like life just can't be wrong. God is not wrong. God is not mocked. Like if you're just so chronically difficult, it's just you. It really is just you. Okay. So on that note, it can even be like a covert tiny thing. So today I heard one of those, am I the a-holes? One of those Reddit things, which I serious skyrockets my blood pressure. I swear this is rage bait and this is like brainwashing. I always thought happy marriages were possible until they started uploading these like Reddit videos to uh, TikTok. Now I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure if there's any happily married people. I'm freaking out. Okay. But basically this man, and usually when it's a man, I'm 90% of the time I'm already checked out. I know he's wrong. Okay. For me to agree with a man, it takes a lot. It just takes a lot. Okay. I haven't had, I haven't observed good example. I'm related to good examples. I haven't observed good examples in my life. Okay. So let me tell you the rundown. This, the question was, he said that his wife has this problem where she just constantly gives things away without asking anyone. He says, it's got to, like, she will lend his tools to coworkers or something, and then just maybe wait a month before asking for it back. So he says, I'll be working on something and I can't find my stuff and it's gone. So him and his son have resorted to locking up their own things. So she doesn't just give them to people or just give them away or lend them out. 
including she tried to do it to her son's like Nintendo Switch. I'm guessing they cost some money or something and like quite a bit or whatever. It's his. He was upset. Pardon me. So basically the husband said he had won a tent in a contest and um, man. (laughs) So he had won a tent in a contest and he was looking for it because he uh, was going to sell it online. He agreed to the purchase. Okay. And then he went to go look for it. He couldn't find it. Turns out the wife had given it to someone. Okay. I don't know if it was like a cousin or she'd given it away. And she said, what's the problem? You didn't pay for it. And so he freaks out at her and he says, uh, I want the money back for that tent because I was going to sell it. And if you don't get it to me, I'm going to get law enforcement involved because it's like theft. So then he said, I think I took it too far because her family's on me saying that I didn't even buy it. So I didn't actually lose the money, this and that. Okay. <sighs> I'm so stressed out. I'm so stressed out. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. Okay. The wife in this case, though obviously not a bad person, clearly a very generous lady, has no boundaries. And a person who cannot say no, has no boundaries, cannot possibly love you fully and completely in your whole form. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is flip the logic that dudes always use on women. And I'm going to say, why didn't you choose better? Why didn't you choose better? You don't think she was like that before you got married? You think she just one day, you mo- she just started giving your stuff away? She was always like that. She was always like that. And that's probably one of the reasons he liked her is because she did not say no to him. All right. That's the first thing. So this is about control. She feels like this is something she can control. She has control over that. And so this is why she does it. Okay. So that's interesting because it's, it masks, I don't want to say it masks itself because I do think it's a good deed or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's not your things. And if you live in a house with other people, you constantly have to have the mentality that you do every action you do affects the greater whole. Try to be quiet, you know, try to be mindful, try to be considerate. So one thing I don't appreciate, it's like, you know, like when you live with like roommates or something, they're like, oh, sorry, I was loud and turned up my music or that I didn't know you had a bad day. You don't need to know I had a bad day. You are a fully formed adult. You understand there's other life forms in this abode. You should just naturally show consideration, flow decency, okay? Flow thoughtfulness. You don't need a re. If you need a reason to be good and well behaved, you're just not that good of a person. That's the truth, okay? So anyway, she gives this stuff away. He says her family said the stuff about he got it for free. So that's crazy. Um, I agree with this man, 95%. The only five percentile he loses marks on is she was probably always this way. I don't know why he's suddenly taking issue. Um, And I'm only doing that because that's the kind of like stupid internet male logic women are constantly hit with. The other thing is law involving law enforcement is a bit much over a tent. If she gave away a car, I would call law enforcement. That's crazy, okay? But threatening your wife, law enforcement is wild, okay? It's not cute, um, I mean, if a woman did it to a man, if he he was angry, you know, that wouldn't go down well. So don't do the same thing, okay? Now, the principle I disagree with is the money, right? Her family saying it didn't cost you anything. Da, 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 da. So she gave him her own money um, because she didn't want to ask that person for money or something like that, okay? This is irrelevant. It's the principle. He took the energy and the time to enter that contest. He won fair and square. That is what he would have gotten, uh, the sale value of that tent. He is entitled to that money. Fair and square. Okay, she had no right to give it away. Can you imagine if he rummaged through her jewelry box and just said he saw their friends got engaged, so he just went over there and gave him some of her jewelry. She'd freak out, right? And this, those, that's different. Those are heirlooms. No, it's not your property. It's not yours to begin with in the first place. Do not touch it. But anyway, this is what I mean. Emotional rigidity. This person is insistent on being a generous person in a, in a pushover, people pleaser kind of way. While someone in your household, including your own child, who you have a moral obligation to protect, I don't know what, what's up with that, to, uh, and you've had multiple discussions with your partner about this. He's clearly not a blowhole, like clearly. Okay. 
that's just a whole mess. Petty squabbles like this make my blood boil. All right, exactly. And this is my thing, right? Um, if a man doesn't respect your things, I can promise you he doesn't respect you. I can promise you that, okay? So I will say the same thing. If she has no regard for the fact that you work for your belongings and then you enjoy them, she probably doesn't respect you. It doesn't sound like she really respects herself, but this is a fixable thing. All right. So I would just, you know, sit them down and say, it really hurts my feelings. And I don't understand that. Also the legal definition of theft is appropriation. And actually it's not just to take, we think of theft as taking something. It's to deprive someone of the enjoyment of a thing. So basically if I went to the, actually I'm going to the library today. So say I'm going, I go to the library and I take out a book and I tear out one page and I bring it back. That is theft because the next person who takes out this book cannot enjoy it to its fullest extent. So when you lend things out that are your partners and you don't ask their permission and inform them and they go into the garage and they go to take out their hammer and saw or whatever and they want to do a little project on the weekend, you've robbed them of their enjoyment. That is the definition of theft, okay? And I'm only bringing this up because we just did a back-to-back -back series on vampirism, okay? So they've vampirized you from that experience. And what's crazy to me is the fact that you bring it up and you say, this is too far. You've done this again. And they break down and like double down as a victim. I'm not having that. At this day and age, past the age of 18, but especially past the age of 25, is completely unacceptable, right? Lesson I learned long ago, never lend out books. Yeah, you'll never get them back. I know that too. Um, and there was another Am I the A-hole where the guy says he's a paramedic and or a firefighter or something. And he always keeps his boots, I think it was like laced or unlaced. I don't remember what it was. One of them. Maybe it was laced. I don't know. And he says he keeps them by the door in the same condition because when he gets a call, he's to jump out of bed and like put them on and run. And his wife keeps lacing them up or the other way around. And, and he's talked to her about it so many times and she keeps doing it. And she's like, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. So he said that one morning, she wakes up for like a morning run at like 530 in the morning. So one night it happened again after they had like a huge blowout about it. So he said he calmly went upstairs to her closet and just pulled out the shoelaces from her running shoes and coiled them up and put them back into the shoes so that when she woke up in the morning, she would have to lace her shoes he said she lost like the 10 minutes it took her to do it. Then it started raining. So she started bawling and calling him immature, saying she missed her run. He ruined the start to her day. He was being extremely petty, right? Okay, maybe that was petty. But at the same time, if you are a functioning, emotionally childish individual, regardless of your sex or gender or whatever, some like words don't teach. If you've ever been around a child, you know this. Words don't teach. Experience is the only teacher on the planet. Experience is the only teacher. Like I'm studying again now, right? That's what she gets. I approve, right? Um, and I was thinking about it and I was like, no teacher, no nut. The only thing, the only way I've ever learned anything through all these years in academia is just by grabbing a book and just sitting my down and being like day after day, like just, I'm, I teach myself, right? Like that experience teaches me. So if that's what it's come to, that you have to treat someone like that, you should really rethink your life and why are you in relationship to them? All right. So this emotional immaturity is very frightening. And I'm only bringing up the third dynamic. Again, I'm going to use is seemingly, I don't know, because these are, these are written from the perspective of a man. So I'm not sure. Right. But, um, seemingly mature women. Okay. So I'm not really sure. Again, I don't know these people. I think these, all this is like AI rage bait, but, um, one of them was this man said, I don't think my fiance can handle any kind of pressure. So he was saying it was another, like one of those Reddit things. Am I the, whatever they were on a boat and the boat encountered some turbulence. And he said, all my friends were like all hands on deck all their wives or girlfriends were like very zen. And he said, my fiance freaked out. She's like, we're going to die. And he said, I told her after she was really embarrassing. And now I'm questioning that if we get married, if a crisis happened, if something happened with our children, she wouldn't be able to control herself. She had like no crisis response mechanism, basically. Or she had like no way of regulating her stress. So he said it really freaked him out. But this is my first question, right? Do you know how dudes are always like, you should choose better? 
But I, I have the same question for you. Why would you, how did you even get to the point of an engagement? If you've been together like two, three years, you've never encountered a stressful situation. How did you even, it's not even her fault at that point. How much did you overlook and then still choose to take a quarter or a third of your yearly salary, get on bended knee and ask her to bind herself to you legally for a lifetime and eternity and beyond? What are you thinking? I'm confused. What are you thinking? You know, so at this point I'm thinking she, she was always herself. You overlooked a bunch of stuff. Don't throw it in her face now. You knew what this was. Okay. <laughs> So if, um, same thing I saw, I don't know the name, but I saw a TikToker where she's, she, she's doing this series, this really elegant woman, <laughs> no thinking. She said, uh, let's get you married, sis. So this is her whole series on how to marry someone. And she was saying that she has this thing where she wants to move in with the man and kind of like audition him. And she said she was with this man for a while living with him. And one day they were coming back from a hot yoga class and he freaked out at someone in traffic. And she said, this was a really... Uh, the other driver was this like 80 something year old man with his wife. And she saw how this, her partner, I think they were engaged at the time. I don't know, but the way he reacted so strongly, angrily, negatively, emotionally, violently, socially, violently, whatever. She said, no, 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 that was a no for me. I'm not taking this into my future. I don't want it around me. I don't want it around my daughter. And she cut him loose, right? That's logical. That's what you're supposed to do. So if you are with someone for one or two years, I find it very hard to believe you've never seen them angry or annoyed about something, right? And at first, if you notice that, how do you even let it get that far? Like, that's what I'm saying. So um, for all the times that dudes say things like she should have chosen better, I say it more so to them just because I don't think women pretend as much as men do to be something they're not. Um, but anyway, so emotional rigidity. So what tends to happen then is you point this out to someone and you say, that didn't make me feel safe. I don't understand why you would disregard that. And to go back to the first case where the man said she was constantly giving his things away. In terms of boundaries, that's an easy boundary to follow. Don't touch things that aren't yours. Don't we teach this to like two-year-olds? No, 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 no. You know what I mean? Like it's so easy to understand. And she keeps doing it. That's wild to me, right? Same with the shoelacing. That's absolutely wild to me. So, um, Stop getting into relationships with people who don't give you the space and freedom to be yourself. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you how they treat possessions is actually a reflection of how they feel about you. There was, um, I can't remember, I can't remember what it was now. Sorry. Like, you know, I love Ian Van Zandt, but she did say something to the effect of, I don't lend men my things. Okay. She said like something to the effect of like, we're not married. You can't borrow my laptop. You can't use this. You can't take my car. You don't finance it. It's for my personal use. What have you invested in me that you can just come and like take things from me? It's like, you know, women have this thing to be agreeable, to be nice, to be very giving. And I understand that. And I am that way. But that only works if you are doing this in relation to another equally reciprocal, mature individual. All right. And it's on you to figure out whether you are or aren't. And that's just one of the things about life. Sometimes we get fooled and bamboozled. Sometimes we get tricked. Yes. You know, and sometimes we get used, but we learn and we move on. All right. And moving on. That's another thing about emotional rigidity. Let it go. Let it go. If you're going to talk about it, do something about it. But I'm not here for all of that. Listen to you. Nah, 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 nah. Day in and day out and day in and day out. My ex-girl did this. My ex-wife did that. My ex-boyfriend, my ex the past is dead. The past is dead. What what are we doing over there? We're going over here. You can't be doing all that moving in silence. I'm going to this, I'm going to that. I'm going to big things are popping for me, but you're only talking about what happened back there and those people I promise you they don't even think of you at night. They don't think of you when they're speaking in tongues on the toilet. You never cross their mind. Nah. Okay? Big bamboozled has me. <laughs> bamboozled I shall not be again. Period. Venting requires movement towards a destination. Exactly. Circular venting is just a form of self-abuse, okay? So maybe sometimes people think that they're being kind by listening to that, but there has to be a beginning, middle, and end. You've got to actually like go through the full circle, like the full cycle of that. You can't, like, you know, it's never one season where I live anyway. 
seasons change. The sun rises, it sets, it's warm, it's hot, it's this, it's that, right? It's rainy, it's dry. So we need to ex- expect that emotionally. People go through high periods, people go through low periods. Um, yeah, things can't be good and right all the time in your opinion. And, and another thing, so emotional rigidity basically is marked by people who are very rigid incapable of being account and another thing by saying every single thing that you believe and feel is a boundary is to never take accountability for anything it just lacks responsibility and it's absolutely not true everything that happens is your responsibility yesterday i got a tummy ache i did that to myself that was my fault i damn well know that was my fault you know i'm not going to sit there and curse the heavens or whatever it is what it is you know Um, You shouldn't have put that delicious cortado into your fat little hands, Monica, and sucked it down, okay? You shouldn't have done that, but you did. You had too much coffee and you felt sick. Yes, you did. You did that. You did that. Yes, you did, okay? It's the truth. And it's not to say that you're supposed to abuse yourself now, but just acknowledge it and move on. It's like a diagnosis. When you understand where you went wrong, you can fix it. Until you understand, until you accept that, you can't fix anything. And no one can come in and be a hero and fix it for you, okay? It's absolute madness. So. Hence the ginger ale for the tummy ache. Okay. So anyway, um, don't entertain this. It's 2024. Learn how to resolve problems. Use your words. Use logic. Use reasoning and understanding. Use your brain and get over it. Okay. Whatever the outcome is, get over it. You're responsible for your own happiness. Keep it moving. If you can't keep it moving, that's really not on anyone. And that's just the absolute truth. Okay. And that's so speaking of compatibility, Rocky asked another question about compatibility in a comment. I don't know if I answered it. I think I did it last time. But basically, compatibility is a choice. You have to be, you have to want to be in a relationship and you have to want to be in a relationship with that specific person. That's it. That's the only two things you need. People are not naturally compatible to one another in the way that we think. We think there's just this magical kismet in the world and some people fit and some people don't. That's not true. You can train yourself into understanding others. And people will say, oh, I just don't feel the chemistry. I'm not attracted to them. I understand that. I know what you mean. But in the grand scheme of things, that makes up like 10% of a relationship. You, love is a verb. Thank you. It's the things you do consistently. Okay. It's you have to flex your imagination and your emotional muscle. Not everything is about hopping on privates and grinding on them till your denim wears out like a teenager, okay? You have to grow up. Like, grow up. What are you doing? What are you doing? Act your age. It's weird. And just sheer entitlement is so crazy. I had a message on, on an app. And they said, hi, I think you're really beautiful. Just so you know, I'm only looking for something casual. Is that okay with you? And I wasn't rude. I just said, is that what it says on my profile? That's all I asked because at your big age, if you cannot read and acknowledge other people, it's a very scary thing. And before anyone says he was just asking, you don't have to. Do that. Nah, 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 nah. Okay, understand something. Someone else outside of myself perceived me to be attractive. That's beyond my control. Then they took it upon themselves to let it be known because they're so childish, they think this is a compliment. When you understand yourself and how life works to some degree, you quickly clue in that person cannot be, do, or have anything for you that is worth being, doing, or having. Why? Because the basis for that interaction is them using you as an instrument of pleasure for themselves. There's no, how are you? There's no acknowledgement of anything on my profile, my humor, my intelligence, my sense of playfulness and whimsy. No, you are a body. So a hole's a hole, okay? If I was to flip it around and say, well, a pole's a pole, pay my tuition, fork it over before I talk to you any farther, I would be called a gold digger or this and that, 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 okay? But that's the truth. So when you have like any brains in your head, you can spot that immediately. That message shouldn't flatter anyone on the face of the planet. And you don't have to be angry because you understand that person is functioning from their level of emotional understanding, which is extremely low. That quotient is like 0.0001%. A 30-something-year-old man just being like, boobies, touch, face nice. So, you know, be bold, okay? Be bold. Don't settle for that. 
I was not ready to be called out. Makes total sense because they only have chemistry with walking red flags. For real, though, they need to flip onto them. Okay, so it's a really good point because a friend of mine has this criteria for first dates that she has to feel this like spark in this chemistry. And again, that's totally fine. But most of my boyfriends, I did not feel that with. So I might be wrong because I chose to enter into relationships with them based on other rational factors and they didn't work out. So I might not be right in saying this. I don't really know. But I do know that I've seen a lot of my friends base their interactions with the opposite sex on this like primal tick that's very um, driven by passion, I would say. And it never goes anywhere because a pa- passion is a feeling and emotions change and run out. They're very fickle and unstable. So instead of observing if that person is consistent, if they're kind, thoughtful, considerate, are they sincere? Okay. And another thing, I want to take it to the next level. If you're a female who dates men, most males will flatter you because access to you is what they live for. You know, it's, that's not to say that you're not special, but if you actually sit there and think about it, especially if you're like around 30, and you've had a lot of exposure to society. Um, most of the things that are, have been said to you have been said to you your entire adult life. Most men who approach you and are lovely to you and pleasant to you, they're doing it because they want something. So by this time of life, that should have no effect on you. Someone being like, you're so funny and you're so beautiful. You're so hot. You're so, you should just be like, I know. Because you all say, do you all have like one script and playbook? Do you just pass around like a PDF? Do you have like a Google Drive where you all just learn how to flirt with girls with the same three lines over and over again? You should be reaching for something deeper and something more. Okay, you're the guardian to your divinity. So please, you know, so that spark stuff, though it's nice, it's not everything. It's like 10% maybe. You need the other 90% to fall into place for that to have any effect on you. Hi. My younger self is sweating right now. Uh, The lesbian, the misogyny works both ways. It's super weird. Shallow compliments to open doors. That's what I'm saying, right? It's like access to your body all the time. No acknowledgement. Hi, Lulu. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Acknowledgement of your humor or your intellect or just vibes. Like, let's just vibe. Why is it, you know, like a, like my eyes are up here, you know? I missed you too. What's new? So yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to mention that. I'm going to try to keep this under one hour. I think I'm going to make it today. Any questions? trying to think of what else I wanted to say on that topic about the spark and all this but yeah another thing too is like emotional maturity is looking beyond that um and I think that just comes with time it's very organic it comes with age that how a person impresses you can take many forms I think that when you are you know involved in some kind of like whirlwind situation a lot of the time, it's just you needing excitement in your life. You know, it's, it sounds mean. It's got nothing to do with the other person. It's just like a prop to that experience. Uh, when you're really fulfilled, there is just like a higher threshold for being impressed. If a girl compliments me, it literally makes me cry nearly. <laughs> Men's compliments make me want to run away. Yeah, it's always suspicious, isn't it? Interesting makes you wonder. And you still need to be complimented. I think the question is, is the compliment deep? You know, it has to be special because most people have vision or some of their senses intact enough to know someone smells good or looks good, or you like their voice. So those surface level um, observations are not going to get you very far because a barista can compliment you an Uber driver can compliment you without knowing you. Okay. You have to work your intuition to actually know how much like 
depth and scope, you know, is actually operating in that other person's brain? Have they thought of you as a person? You know what's happening? What is happening? And how seriously you'd like to take it. I realized I probably don't notice genuine flirting. That's outside the realm of your heart. So either way, they get ignored. Poor things. Period. It has to be thoughtful. However simple, it should be tailored to the person. Exactly. It should be tailored. Yeah, it does. Okay, so I have a response from the person. So I said to them, okay, so he said, hello, you're super attractive. I should let you know. I'm mostly looking for something casual. Is that okay? I wrote, does it say the same on my profile? He wrote, upon further review, no, LOL. I don't want to be rude. And another thing I will never do is correct a man's thinking or correct his behaviors for, simply for the fact that um, your curse is being yourself. You're cursed unto yourself when you're unawakened. And by improving your current state of being, I get no benefit from that. So I'm not going to go out of my way to shower you with wisdom from the Garden of Momo's Delights. You're just some like chump. Um, just ignore it. Just leave it. He was already rude by not taking the time to read. That's the truth. But see, if I said that, then he'll know how to scam the next person a lot better. Right? Why do you think, you know, it's interesting. This is a really good uh, social experiment. People who go to jail, who, who go to prison, for more minor offenses, come out professional criminals <laughs> because you expose them. You expose them to people who've done a lot worse and then they learn. They learn how to do it. So never ever teach them how to be civilized. Don't humanize them. It's their job to humanize themselves, right? C'est la vie. Sous la vue or whatever the French say, like that TikTok said that made me laugh so much. Bye, Ada. This is true. I missed you and I'm happy to hear your words. Oh, thank you so much. This is true, right? Like, and this goes for friendship. This goes for everything. If you can't take it upon yourself to improve upon yourself in this life and you are your greatest project, like, why am I here? I don't have children. Why am I parenting adults? This is wackadoodle. I'm bad at exposing because I enjoy shaming grown adults. Fact, though. I mean, at work, it's very fun. It's very fun to be like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> But okay, thank you so much. If there's no questions, I'm going to go back to studying. Wish me luck. I love you all. I'll see you live, hopefully, on the Sunday. Pray for me this Friday. Pray for me. My first exam is Wednesday. So please pray for me. Pray for me. I love you all. Bye.